Sup dudes, today we're gonna review the Ride One Up Tourist. It's a brand new electric bike from Ride One Up. It's like a commuter slash touring style electric bike. It seems pretty awesome and it costs only about 1300 bucks. So let's unbox it. Let me show you the components. We'll charge up the battery and then we'll take it out for a test ride and I'll put it through my standard list of performance tests. We'll see what kind of range we get, how the hill climbing is and all that. So uh, let's build it. Charger comes in a pretty box, two amp charger. And right away, I'm seeing there's gonna be a little bit more assembly involved in this. But they do give you the tools to do so. Pedals, tourists. Got all the instructions right here. And here's what it looks like when you get out of the box. Metal fenders, Kenda booster knobby tires, 27.5 inches tall, 2.4 inches wide. I'm personally a big fan of the gum wall thing. Drilled and slotted 180 millimeter rotor brakes, wide and soft saddle. Fork does not come installed, but we do get 100 millimeters of travel on this suspension front fork. Typically, there's only about 80 millimeters of travel on these. And we have this piece up here for stability, and it is a lock or unlock fork with preload adjustments. First look at the paint, it's like an army looking green. I think this looks excellent in combination with those gum wall tires. Got the key. Battery integrates to the frame from the underside. What are we working with? 48 volt, 12.8 amp hour, 614 watt hours. We'll charge the battery while we build the bike. Right away, we can see the handlebars have a very nice rise and we have Zoom hydraulic disc brakes. One of my favorite sets of disc brakes with a nice set of levers as well. Thumb throttle is on the left. Typical ride one up display, it's basic and good. Rubber ergonomic hand grips, bolted in place now so they're not gonna rotate on you. And a Shimano seven speed shifter on the right. And you also get a headlight. Don't look at the mess. That's better. Just a few pieces to put together here. No need to be afraid of this part. Just get a little bit of grease down there. Get a little bit of grease, same thing. Now this little guy goes on here, just like that. I believe this piece goes right here. This comes down, seals everything up. Drop your spacers on. Handlebars on. You gotta tighten this down first before you tighten down these on the side. This goes on the inside in case you tip your bike over, you don't smash your hydraulic brake line on the outside. Pro tip, put this headlight and fender on before you put the wheel on. You don't have to, but it'll make your life a hundred times easier. Let's put the front hydraulic brake on. You can leave these screws a bit loose right now till we get the wheel on. We've got a quick release on the front wheel for easy transportation if you have to take the wheel off. You can hear the brakes rub a little bit, which is why we did not tighten that up yet. Guess we'll put this on now. Grab this little bolt. Tires call for 20 to 50 PSI. I think 38 will do. Here's what it looks like when we're done building it. We get a Shimano Altus derailleur, seven Shimano gears, and of course these Zoom hydraulic disc brakes. I'm grabbing the front brake lever with my right hand, squeezing it just a little bit, snugging these up in the proper position so they don't rub. We get an equally powerful 180 millimeter hydraulic disc brake on the rear as well. And we have a 750 watt geared hub motor with 60 Newton meters of torque. We've got eyelets up here and down here for a rear rack, eyelets for a water bottle holder, and the beautiful Ride One Up logo up front. Model Taurus XR, 60 Newton meters of torque claimed, designed in California. Let's power it up. Typical Ride One Up display. Battery is almost fully charged. To turn on the light, you press the plus button, get a little backlit display. Gives you your uh, power of the motor, which I always like. Your miles, average speed, trip, time. Here's what the headlight looks like. No tail light. Although they do give you reflectors, I just didn't put them on. Front headlight is reasonably bright. Typical gear shifter, seven gears on the Shimano shifter. And the front suspension, you can either lock out or leave open. All right, let's get it out for a ride. Try right, this throttle. Once again, we'll start at the Strava to measure our official distance. And just like every other e-bike review I do, we're gonna start this out doing a 20% hill climb. Now this bike does have 60 Newton meters of torque and they don't really claim that this thing could do this, but we're just gonna go ahead and see how it performs under throttle only. I'm not pedaling at all. No rollout, ready, go. See the hill climbing. So yeah, I can't do the 20% grade from a stop. Let's do a rollout. So with a little bit of a rollout, starting at about six, eight, full throttle, no pedaling, pedal assist five, 
Now we can kind of roll up the 20% grade. So obviously add a little bit of your own pedaling and use the seven gears on the Shimano shifter. And this thing can definitely do hills. It's just not like a hill climbing monster. If you want like a hill climbing monster, you're probably gonna need to go for like a fat tire e-bike with 80 Newton meters of torque or more. Another absolutely beautiful evening here in Southern California. Let's hop on this relatively good looking bike and take it out for a cruise. Definitely a bit of a breezy evening. I hope that doesn't affect my audio too much. So on pedal assist one, go ahead and give it a little bit of power of my own and gets us up to 11 miles an hour. I think it's a cadence sensor. It might be a torque sensor, I don't know. Pedal assist two brings us up to about 13. Pedal assist three. Let's shift up to gear three now, snappy shifter. These, sh these Shimano shifters are always pretty darn good. Oh, the handling, I like the handling. It, these bikes with the more narrow tires always handle so much better than those fat four inch tire bikes. So right away, I can tell the cadence sensor or torque sensor, I, have, I can't figure out what it is quite yet. It's a nice sensor. So on pedal assist three, I'm cruising at 15, 14 miles an hour. It's giving me 70, 170 watts of power. And that's pretty much where it maxes me out at. Yeah, just like 170 watts of power continuous. Let's do pedal assist four. Bumps me up to 300 watts of power. 306. Definitely a very nice riding bike. The lighter weight, it feels pretty nice and nimble, which is refreshing coming from heavier bikes. From a stop on pedal assist five, give it a little bit of throttle to start us. I'm on a high gear. And right away, it gives us 485, 567, 560 watts of power. And brings us up to, let's take it out into LA rush hour. So the bike is bringing us up to 28. Right about 28. So to talk about the cadence sensor on this bike, it's nice. Uh, it's like gentle. A lot of times on these cadence sensor bikes, they like tend to jerk you around a lot. I find that the Ride One Up's torque sensor or the Ride One Up cadence sensors are uh, really nice and gentle with their power delivery. Even on pedal assist four or five, oh, and that front suspension, that's nice too. <laughs> So even on pedal assist five, uh, you know, it gives you good power, like for 500, 550 watts, um, but it's not like overly torquey, where sometimes on the bikes that are really good at doing hill climbing with the cheap cadence sensor, they tend to jerk you around a lot. So this area has basically become my drag strip to see how fast these bikes go. I weigh 200 pounds. We're gonna do thumb throttle only. Uh, this is the GPS speedometer so we can see side by side. Ready, go. So gentle off the line, full throttle, 10 miles an hour, delivering about 790 watts, 800 watts, 20, 800 watts, 22, 23. And it cuts you off right around 22, 23 and the speedometer is accurate according to GPS. I always like to get a little hop in here. Front suspension on this bike, you can always appreciate having a little extra travel. So 100 millimeters of travel, whereas a lot of bikes you get 80 millimeters of travel. So about 20% more. Mostly riding this bike, the thing that I'm really noticing is just like how nimble and just like how nimble it feels. So the setup of this bike is like commuter slash touring. Uh, definitely seems like it can kind of be, you know, like somewhat of like an off-roady kind of bike. You know, it is a hardtail, so it doesn't have rear suspension, but the tires on this bike are definitely like capable for like getting traction, riding off-road as well. So let's talk about the gearing. Um, I'm on gear four, pedal assist four, Gearing is definitely appropriate. Shifting up to seven, cruising at 17. My legs are churning about this fast. So definitely like an appropriate gearing setup on this bike. So we have a more gentle, reasonable hill, something like you'd probably actually encounter in real life on a commute. Uh, pedal assist four, gear six, 
It's giving me 300 watts of power, pulling me up the hill just fine, going about 15. So the Taurus is definitely capable for, you know, like moderate hills on commutes when you're actually going to be pedaling and helping the bike out. You know, you want to get a little bit of exercise, but you want to boost from that motor without having a bike that weighs an excessive amount of weight. So using the throttle on this bike, it gives you all the power, uh, regardless of what pedal assist you have it on. So you can be on pedal assist three, you know, riding and say you need like a little boost to like get around people, then you can just uh, hit the throttle and give you a little boost up to top speed. So in general, I would say this seems like a nice commuter style bike that you're gonna get some exercise on. Like I wouldn't really rely on this bike as you know, just using throttle only to go everywhere you wanna go. I'm curious to see if it can make it through the sand here. It's gonna be probably a bit of a challenge, but let's try it. Yeah, these tires are a little bit not wide enough for loose pack sand. But they are like pretty knobby, so like they're good for like, you know, riding off-road to some degree but you're not gonna be like cruising over like beach stuff. Bit of a range update, we are five miles into this ride, still showing full battery. I wanna see about taking this thing down some stairs. You can definitely tell uh, that front suspension, 100, and 100 millimeter and the wider tires, it has like much better like rebound compared to like a fat tire bike. It's because of that front tire is so much lighter, less rubber on it. Uh, the suspension feels uh, quite nice. See how this bike does a little off-roading. I mean, the tires definitely will give you a lot more traction compared to like normal uh, street tires. So, I mean, this is like a great like hybrid style bike kind of that you know, you can do street riding, uh, but you can also do some like light trail riding as well. And you know, just kind of like an all arounder. It's great because it's got that front suspension to help you out a little bit. Kind of hop on and off trails. Pretty nimble with like the narrower tires again and gets up to speed pretty quickly without, you know, being too abrupt in that power delivery. It's just like a nice, consistent, steady power delivery that can get you up to speeds that's really all you need to go i'll have to try these brakes out soon the levers on these zoom hydraulic brakes are pretty much my favorite that come on budget bikes it's basically either these zoom ones or the tektro brakes uh they just have like a really they hook into your finger nicely oh let's try this out oh yeah and uh, for a budget bike, these uh, zoom brakes are really good. We'll put them to a test here in a minute though. One thing that's really nice about this bike is the length of the saddle post is really long. So this bike could fit a wide variety of individuals. I'm six foot five and I don't even have this seat post all the way on max. And I can get the proper leg extension, not even on max at six five. However, the seat post also drops down a lot. So somebody who's way shorter than six five could definitely fit on this bike. When the seat post is at the proper height, for my uh, leg extension the bike does put me a little bit up on like the handlebars kind of in like you know a good like commuter style position so this is the kind of bike that's definitely going to get you kind of more in like a riding position where you can put down some power to the pedals and you're going to have a little bit of your weight up on your arms here uh, really taking advantage of that front suspension evening out like the bumps in the road so let's go ahead and try a more uh, modest hill this one's actually like kind of fairly steep but let's go ahead and see what we can do. Downshift all the way to one. It's only on pedal assist three. Let's add it up to pedal assist five. And now, you know, it's giving me 520 watts of power and we're able to pick up a little bit of speed and get up to about eight miles an hour going up this decently steep hill. Looping around here just to show you what kind of elevation gain we just climbed. This is the hill. We just did here all right so we are 7.5 miles into this ride now and it's showing the first sign of like battery bar going down 
just like the little tiny sliver in the top right of that corner went down. So I've got to say, compared to some of the previous model Ride One Up bikes I've reviewed, um, I like some of the improvements that they're making over time. Like little stuff like these hand grips. I can remember on the original Core 5 I reviewed, they didn't have these little bolts kind of holding them in place and they would like rotate down on you. And it was really annoying. These ones have like the Allen key bolt on there, holding it in place, so they're never gonna rotate on you. And then I don't remember which brakes they had on the Core 5 I reviewed, but I can tell you right now, these brakes, they run on fat tire e-bikes and they work really good on even heavier fat tire bikes. So I guarantee you these brakes are gonna be good when we try them out in a minute. But before we test the brakes, let's do the California incline. And I just wanna talk about this pedal assist a little bit more because I feel like it's worthy of talking about. A lot of times on these cadence sensor style bikes, they're pretty much like an all or nothing kind of thing. That is not the case on the Ride One Up's cadence sensors. I don't know what they do, what kind of sorcery they have, but I mean, it's giving me 78 watts of power output now and pedal assist three, like I ran, it ramps up, like it's just nice and gentle. Like it has like a very almost like torque sensor kind of feel to it. Not as good as a torque sensor, but definitely um, a big improvement over a typical cadence sensor on budget bikes. So now what we're gonna do is go up the California incline. It's like a gradual long incline and see how the bike holds up. I would like to point out this bike does come in a step over frame as well as a step through. The step through basically just has this bar removed. So it's a little bit easier to get on. I'm cool with either one, but the step throughs are definitely a little easier to get on while the step over just has a little more frame integrity for doing a little bit more intense, you know, maybe like off-road riding and stuff. So rolling into the little loop-de-loop. -loop. Down, shift the gear to, around pass this three, bump it on up to five. And we can handle going up the loop-de-loop. -loop. All right, on the California incline, we're gonna start from a stop, throttle only, and see what the bike can do on its own. Ready, go. I always forget what this grade is. I want to say it's 12% average and maybe a 7%. But yeah, the bike, the bike is able to climb the California incline, putting out 750 watts of output. And we have 15 miles an hour on the speedometer. So this bike can definitely handle like a long gentle incline. No problem. So that's the hill we just went up and we just were down there on that bike path. Right, so now what we're gonna do is a brake test from 20 180 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes. These are the gold standard in brakes. Let's brake. Oh yeah, excellent, excellent brakes. All right, brake test from 20 and Excellent brakes. All right, dude's been out here for 58 minutes, 9.9 .9 miles, basically 10 miles, showing um, four out of five bars. See what happens if we uh, pedal now, put a little pedaling effort in. So now you can do 25, 26, 20. So right about 26 is what I'm able to get it up to. It's still giving me full power, 500 watts, so about 27. It didn't cut me off electronically. I, I just couldn't do more personally. All right, guys, just making it back in the neighborhood. We did a total of 17.4 miles, basically, hour and 35 minutes of ride time. Battery is showing two out of five bars. So 48 volt, 12.8 amp hour battery. I'd say this thing would be good for about 25 to 35 miles of range the way I ride it. Now I did do some hill tests and some high speed tests on this thing. So, you know, it really just depends on like how you ride it, how much you weigh, what kind of range you're going to get. In general, I'd say this is like a nice commuter slash touring style bike. These fenders are going to keep you clean. It does have eyelets to mount a rear rack. The tires are reasonably wide, which keeps them light and they have a knobby tread pattern. They worked really good on the street for me. And they'll definitely give you increased confidence when riding off-road and you need a little more traction. Personally, I love the style of this bike, the subtle green 
with the gum wall tires. I think the green with the gum wall tires is just a really nice look. Although this bike does come in different colors and also it comes in a step through frame with basically this bar removed. So you can get on the bike just a little bit easier. The saddle is wide and soft and comfortable. Hand grips are ergonomic. The zoom hydraulic brake levers feel great to grab. One of the most impressive things I find about the cadence sensor on these Ride One Up bikes it's just how smooth it is. A lot of times when I'm reviewing a cadence sensor style bike, it really just is like an on and off switch and it gives you jumps of power and it cuts you off at like hard levels of like miles per hour. The cadence sensor on the Ride One Up bikes is much better than the typical one. It works a lot more like a torque sensor, not exactly a torque sensor, but much more like a torque sensor than a cadence sensor. The display is nothing fancy, but it does give you all your key metrics and it does display your wattage power output of the motor and battery. It's a feature that I always like to see. The hydraulic disc brakes paired up to the 180 millimeter rotors is plenty sufficient stopping power for this bike. I see the same exact brake setup put on much heavier bikes all the time. In general, the power delivery of this bike is uh, relatively gentle. It's not gonna like jerk you around, so it makes for like a nice pleasant commuter style bike. It does decent on hills, but for those steeper ones, you're gonna have to put in a little bit of pedaling power on your own and uh, give it wide open throttle likely. But on the gentler inclines, it does just fine. So if you're looking for a yes or no answer on this bike, I'd give it a yes. I do have a link below this video if you'd like to grab one and it would help support this channel at no additional cost to you. However, if this e-bike isn't your jam, you can watch this video here next. Thanks for watching guys. Give me a thumbs up, drop a comment. Catch you next time.